Well, first, Kieran, I want to start with a big story that broke today. We're recording this on Wednesday afternoon for anyone listening later in the week. But this weekend's Cork Camogie, this weekend, sorry, Cork's Camogie team faced down in Parky Cueve on Saturday. And later that evening, the ladies football team are also playing. They're playing away to Galway. So it's another fixture clash for dual players. And it's another fixture clash that has led to a messy situation today. Yeah, it's an all too familiar tale, Dylan, when we have these fixture clashes, and it's it's very unfortunate. Um, and it's 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 very hard on Cork's four dual players. That's Hannah Looney, Libby Coppinger from St. Columns, Orla Cahalan, and Aoife Healy. So they're four Cork players who play both ladies football and camogie. And like you said, on Saturday, both of those teams are in championship action, and they're important games for both teams. The Cork Camogie team wants to bounce back from their opening round defeat when they take on down at home while the Cork footballers are away to Galway in their opener. So both teams have big championship games. And what's happened, the fact that these games are both on the same day, it's just led to what you described as a messy situation. And that's exactly what it is. Because both the Cork Camogie team and the Cork football team want these players because, like I said, they are important. They are important to both setups. So on Wednesday morning, the Cork ladies football team for the game against Galway was circulated. And on that team it had the four dual players listed. So from that, it, it appeared that the a decision had been made that those four players would play with the Cork football team. But within an hour of that team being put out there, I was um, I discovered or I learned that the Cork Camogie team also intends to name those four players and their team for their clash against Down on Saturday. So this is, this is a mess. It really is. Both teams want those dual players for for Saturday's games. There's no there's no compromise at the moment. There's no one budging. Both have their reasons for for picking the players. The Carcamogi team have a fierce injury crisis at the moment. They've eight players out through injury. They've uh, another player sitting her leave insert. And if they're missing the four dual players, I've been told they're down to just nineteen players for this game on on Saturday. While the Cork ladies football team. On paper, the game against Galway is the tougher of their group games. They're playing Tipperary in a couple of weeks' time, but they want their dual players for this game because it's a tough game away from home against a good Galway team. So, unfortunately, no solution has been found between the two Cork teams. And it looks like the players would be forced to decide which team they want to line out with. And to be honest, that's dreadful. That's awful for these players to be put in that situation, in that position, just a couple of days out from huge championship games. But take this into the bigger picture. Why have the LGFA and the Camogie Association fixed these two championship games for the same day? Hannah Looney was um, promoting the championships last week and she made a point last weekend was free. This Sunday is free and the following weekend is free. There are dates in the calendar that one of these games could be moved to, but there was no budging. It really beggars belief that here we are, 2023, still talking about these these fixture clashes, and it's the four players at the centre list that, that are going to miss out. They're the ones that are suffering. If they have to choose which team they have to line out for on Saturday, I just it's it's hard to wrap your head around that because they're teammates, the players on both teams, and how you would ask those players to choose, it's it's just very disappointing. So hopefully that both the Cork Camogie and the the Cork Ladies Football that those management teams can come together and find a solution because it just think it's it's not right to put the players in that situation. Yeah, and it's not the first time this has happened this year either. We said earlier it's another fixture clash. Um, the first game in the Munster Championship, footballers were away to tip and Komogi Tide was at home to Waterford and they were split up that day. So we were told that they wouldn't be split up again. So that's why we believed that when we heard the Cork football team today that all the, the players would be playing this weekend for the football team. And there's another clash on the cards on July 1st as well. So it's it's not something that looks like it's going to be solved anytime soon, is it? No, that's the unfortunate thing. Um, like you said, there on July 1st, both the Cork and Morgan and the Cork ladies football teams are both in championship action again on the same day. So it looks like we're going to have another fixture clash unless it's sorted out at the 11th hour. So that's three fixture clashes in the space of, what, two months? So again, it's the players caught in the middle. It's the players that's suffering. And we've been here before. That's why I think for the players themselves, they're almost hitting their heads against a brick wall. They're like, Jesus, what do we have to do to get this sorted? Like they've they've banged the drum, they've hit out at the associations, they've highlighted the lack of communication. Um, Hannah Looney warned last week that that the players could be choose could be forced to choose one code over the other, or they could give, give up both codes altogether. 
the players are at the end of their tether. They've, they've had enough. And that's why you'd hope and you'd want the associations, the powers that be, the people who make these decisions at a higher level to make decisions that are that take into account, I think, the welfare of, of the players first off. But especially when there is gaps in the calendar to slot these games into, I'd just love to know why, why, why this isn't happening. And some people might hit back and say, well, in the men's inter-county senior, that the that the dual player doesn't exist there in, in, in hurling and, and in football. And I accept that as well. But the dual player in, in, in ladies, in ladies um, GA here in Cork, it's just so special and it means so much to everyone. The Dorena the Buckley's, the Breach Corkley's, these legends of the game who achieve so, so much in both codes. And if it can be facilitated, it should be facilitated. Because what we have here in those four players, like I said, Libby Carpenter from St. Columns is one of those, four fantastic role models for young girls and boys right around the county. They have shown that it's possible to, to be good inter-county standard in two sports and to be disciplined and talented enough to play at that level. So it's just really unfortunate that we're, we're here again. And the sad reality is, Dylan, we'll probably be talking about this again later in the year and, and again next year and again the year after until it is started. We've heard a lot about the amalgamation with the, the ladies' GA and Camogie Association coming under the, the GA umbrella. Will that sort it out? Possibly it will. But how far off is that? Is, is, is that um is that from happening? So it's just, like I said, it's it's a mess, it's a shambles, and for the players involved to put them in this situation on the week of a big championship game, it's just not good enough. No, not at all. And it's frustrating for, for us as well, for, for fans of, of the sport as well, because like you said, there's a lack of communication between the two associations, but a lack of communication to, to fans as well. Like nobody knows why this can't be sorted, why it's happening, why um it can't be fixed. So it is very frustrating. I thought the quote from Hannah Looney was very interesting. You mentioned her earlier last week. She said, um, realistically, if they're trying to push away the dual player and get rid of us, you're going to lose us from one organization or the other or both. So that's quite an ominous kind of statement to make as well. So I guess we'll see what happens with that in due course.